warm welcome to all of you. We are here today to answer some of the most frequently asked questions. I'm here with five students from the first year from both BA and BBA LLB cohorts. We are here at the newly built Pittslaw uh, campus today from uh, Mumbai and uh, I will ask my students now to have a candid chat with me so that we can answer some of the questions that frequently come up in conversations, frequently are asked to our admissions team and uh, I will first of all introduce all these students. So let's ask them how their first year at Witslaw has been. Uh, Hi, I am Pranjal and I am pursuing the BALLB course at the Bits Law School, Mumbai. And uh, for me, just being at a law school is a dream come true. Uh, from since, since when I was a child, I had this dream of getting into a law school, which I feel it, uh, I'm living through it and I'm sitting in a law school and I'm enjoying every bit of it. Um, hi, I'm Priya. I'm pursuing the BALLB course. Uh, my first year at BITS has been like a roller coaster with mostly highs. It's given me, it's left me with so many memories and experiences. So overall, yeah, it's been an extremely exhilarating year. Uh, hi, my name is Ariman. I'm from the BA LLB batch. Uh, my first year at BITS Law School has been amazing with a plethora of subjects to study, interdisciplinary learning and uh, a variety of cultural and sporting opportunities as well. Hi. I am Anushree, I am pursuing the BBA LLB course and for me I was a science student in the 11th grade and 12th grade so what was the best part about my first year at um, Bits Law School has been the fact that I have been exploring new subjects which I have never really studied before and it's, it's wonderful, I just love it. Hello, I am Sal from the BA LLB batch. And I'm really enjoying my subjects. I'm intellectually stimulated by them. I was very drawn to law because of my intellectual curiosity regarding the arts and humanities and the intersection of law between these intellectual curiosities and real world professional experience. So I'm learning these hard skills in law school and meeting people from all over the country with a very diverse batch. So I'm really enjoying myself in my first year here. Okay, thank you. Um, while I'm here and I'm going to ask some of the most frequent questions that we get. Um, at the end of this session, if there are still some questions that are left unanswered, please feel free to drop them in the chat window uh, on Zoom. So let's begin. Um, first of all, what has life been like at the Bits Law Hostel, <coughs> living away from home? I believe um, two of you are from outside Bombay. So how has it been like? So I'm originally from Dehradun, Uttarakhand. So, um, coming into Mumbai, uh, we have to get accustomed to the fast life around there and then especially the law school. So, you get accustomed to the busy life, the busy schedule, the classes from morning till late evening and then doing all the assignments followed by managing your own finances, managing the clothes, managing your own uh, work. I, I think every bit you get a bit independence, a feel of independence that I think is unique to shifting uh, to Mumbai and to a law school. Um, so I'm from Bangalore and uh, from someone who comes from Bangalore, Bombay <coughs> feels like a sauna every day. Uh, so that's something that I had to get used to. Other than that, Mumbai as a city is extremely vibrant and it has helped me fulfill some of my Bollywood dreams. Um, it is a very, very fast paced city and it's true the city never sleeps but that's something that I found really interesting. Uh, coming to the hostel aspect of it, um, I believe that it's an experience that everyone should have. Uh, initially, it is slightly hard to cope and uh, manage, especially when you have to do your own groceries, do your own laundry, manage your finances and the most uh, demanding task of all is to wake up on time without someone there to wake you up for college. Uh, but yeah, over time, it feels like a sleepover with your best friends all the time. And uh, yeah, so it's been good. Okay, thank you. Um, we get asked about scholarships a lot and we have our GD Billa scholar here with us today. So Anushri, I would like to ask you what was uh, the process like? How did you apply for the scholarship? Maybe you can share that with our viewers. Uh, 
for me, applying for the scholarship was not any particularly different as uh, compared to the application process. All I did was apply. I studied for the entrance tests and I did not do any specific strategy per se for uh, getting the scholarship and uh, it was a very easy and I, of course any exam is not without stress but I would say that it was it was very nice it was not I did not have to do anything specific towards it as an applicant was the process of application and uh, for the progress smooth yes it was absolutely smooth because there is no specific requirement for it uh, you have to apply just as you would apply for your um, for a normal application to bits law and based on your credentials so it's it's very hassle free yeah. and very smooth sailing and all of you had to go through an interview process to get into bits law so maybe some of you can share that experience what was the interview like what kind of questions were asked and uh, what did you think about it so i was interviewed by professor chinmay himself so I feel the interview bit was the most exciting part of the whole admission process. Uh, you cannot prepare for the interview, I think, just a day before. So it's a culmination of what you are. It's a culmination of what you have read throughout the year, I think. And uh, we discuss on a whole array of topics. For example, the same-sex marriage. Um, I mean, Tushar Mehta's arguments, then Kapil Sibyl's arguments, then uh, Mukul Rothagi, all of them. I enjoyed like every bit of it as because we were talking law, we were talking philosophy, we were talking sociology, we were talking all that stuff that I like too. That's why I think we call it an informal interaction rather than an interview. So I, th I think it was the best part of the whole admission person and, and I enjoyed every bit of it. So that was my experience. Uh, I was interviewed by Dr. Supriya who teaches us marketing. She's the professor of marketing at Bits Law. Um, the interview did not feel like an interview, it was more like a chat with a friend. Uh, something that I found particularly interesting about the interview was the one word essay that we were asked to do. So essentially during the course of the interview, uh, the interviewer will give you one word. So the word that I got was green and I was asked to talk about it for I think a minute and a half. And uh, although I was nervous about it, it went very smoothly and it, like, it got me thinking on my feet which is what I think a lawyer should be doing. So overall, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I was interviewed by Professor Anand who teaches us corporate finance and uh, it was more of an interaction really. I was immediately put at ease and um, it was, we spoke about neurochemistry which is something I'm really interested in and then we also spoke about current events, books that I enjoy <coughs> and uh, it was just the one word story as Priya had mentioned, my word was courage. So it made me think again on my feet. It was very uh, impromptu but I, I think I learned about myself that I can actually do something like that. So it was very nice the whole interview process and easy. Thank you for sharing. So now that you're into law school, you're away from home, um, it's very different from going to school I'm sure. 30 hours of lectures, a lot of guest lectures, extracurriculars. How do you manage your time? Um. Being in law school of uh, such a high quality also means having a daunting amount of work to complete. But at the same time, I believe uh, as a student, these are the five golden years of our life, these years that we spend at college. So it's really essential for us to manage our time efficiently. While we uh, take care of our uh, lecture, our attendance, our assignments, all of that, I feel it's really important to also have a good uh, personal schedule. Uh, where we work on ourselves, uh, certain interests, for example, writing, reading, uh, maybe physical activity, and at the same time trying to uh, develop and sharpen your personality as a whole. Uh, sure, be a good student um, on one end, but on the other side, I also believe um, managing things like sleep in a law school especially, uh, as my peers would be knowing, is a very important thing. So, uh, yeah, a total balance, a total 360 approach to the entire thing is uh, something which every student should give utmost importance to in a law school. I agree with Aryaman entirely that the key to time management is how you spend your time outside of academics. Uh, maintaining your physical and mental health is of paramount of importance. If you're getting 8 hours of sleep, if you're exercising a bit every day, you're having a good diet, 
all of these things will pay compound interest when you're actually using your time studying and focus on academics. So the question is, how do you have productivity? How do you make the most out of your time? How do you have the maximum outputs for the least amount of inputs? And in order to do that, you need to have self-development, free time, spending time with friends, time outside of academics. And uh, luckily, even academics is not that overwhelming because of the way our professors have designed our curriculum and the entire semester. So we get an academic calendar at the beginning of the semester where we have assignments. And so we can make our own personal schedules and calendars. So if you're managing our health and wellness outside of college, then the professors have designed the curriculum such that uh, throughout the semester, there is a balance of assignments and exams. So we can uh, address those. And especially with guest lectures, tutorials, we have uh, many ways of learning. So we are stimulated through uh, in multiple different ways and we don't find it too stressful a particular style of learning with if you're an audio and visual learner then you have enough guest lectures if you're more of a reader like a music learner you have enough readings so there's a balance of this so if you construct a schedule at the beginning of a semester i think it should be manageable and although it's rigorous it's quite enjoyable and stimulating so one of the skills you learn at law school is time management absolutely absolutely glad okay um i also want to know what has your experience been like with the course curriculum what have you learned so far and what did you like in particular? Um, so, uh, like I think Aryaman mentioned initially, the course has been extremely interdisciplinary. As a BA student for the first semester, I also did finance courses and marketing courses, which to be very honest, helped me a lot in my internship. Uh, initially, I was a bit hesitant because maths is really not my thing. But finance and marketing and the professors made it so easy. It was a very smooth sale. The course is curated in such a way that uh, each course picks up where the other one left off. So, I mean, like if we're studying something in polit uh, political ideologies, then the history uh, course will pick it up from where it left off. So, I think it's very interlinked that way. And so, there's not a lot of gap. We are very, uh, we're taught in a very interdisciplinary way. Uh, just to add on to what we are saying, I think the uh, pedagogical methods and tools that the professors have used to teach us our, very, our various courses are very innovative. For example, in the first semester, we had an integrated social sciences course. So as Pierre was mentioning, political science is linked with history, which is linked with sociology. And uh, this interlinked method of teaching helps us understand the entire social context of the broader society in a much better way. And even the activities we get to do challenge us in multiple ways. For example, we have tutorial activities for our social science course. We have to do parliamentary debates or we pick out random flashcards and have to speak on a topic. So these kind of assessments, they assess us in different ways and challenge us beyond just the exam. And particularly, I find in our law subjects, in the first semester, we also had a law of thoughts subject. So we, we did a moot court exercise in the very first semester, which I think is quite innovative. I think in most law schools, moot courts only happen later on. So these, these kinds of assessments are uh, challenging in different ways that go beyond the exam and are very interesting and innovative in my opinion. So the course curriculum is designed in a very unique way. It's very interesting that you mentioned mooting and uh, that has been a part of the curriculum. You have been assessed uh, on mooting and I think uh, some of you also took part in some competition. So maybe you'd like to share that with us. I mean, um, as he just rightly said, um, the mooting is a central part of, a, of any law school and inculcating that process of, I mean, courtroom arguing is something central to the litigation and to the law school in, in turn. And uh, doing that in the first semester itself is something very unique that we had. Uh, it involved making the memo, doing citations. I still remember Cyril and I sitting at the night at the last hour making citations and submitting the memo at the last hour, last minute in fact and then going on to argue inside the courts, the oral arguments were incredibly, uh, I mean, close to the courtroom experience that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they, these elements are very essential into a uh, character building and a, and a perfect lawyer building, so that one can have a holistic experience of how to argue inside the Absolutely. courtroom. Absolutely. I think holistic experience, let's talk about MUNs, all the United Nations and uh, Aryaman and Anushri, I believe, have uh, been to BITS Goa for a competition. So maybe tell us more about that. Right. So um, while moot courts uh, rank at the pinnacle of uh, courtroom, uh, close to courtroom experience in law schools, I believe MUNs are a platform which helps us sharpen our public speaking skills 
uh, the ability to think on your feet and uh, come up with solutions for a certain global problem that you're given. So uh, this semester we had been to BITS Goa for an MUN and uh, being a university level MUN, it gave us great exposure, meeting people not only pan India but from all over the world as well. So that opens your mind to different perspectives, different people, new experiences. So uh, the conference in itself was great, but I feel um, the entire experience of meeting a diverse uh, variety of people and um, understanding their perspectives and how they view a certain thing was really interesting to me. We were a 12 member delegation that went and it was an incredible opportunity. We got to network with a lot of people, we learned a lot and the research that went into it was also something that we learned about some uh, main global issue. Apart from that, it was a wonderful experience because we went, we travelled, it was I would say the first ever uh, delegation that went from our, and, uh, our batch and it was just, it was really good and it was an education experience. That's, that's great. So, at the law school itself, you know, there are several committees, clubs, societies that you've built that have come up. Maybe share some of your experience with these societies and clubs and what are you doing with them? Yes. Uh, so, we started a constitutional club. So, the constitutional law starts from the second year onwards, but uh, some of the students who were interested in the law uh, and were keen in um, researching more in the law in several fields of the law, for example, basic structure, doctrine, the collegium system, and etc., uh, made a constitutional club by themselves so that they can delve into these matters more intricately and uh, delve into self several nuances in uh, the law. And so we set up the constitutional uh, society so that we can get that push. Uh, so that when the law especially comes into the curriculum, we know the subjects that are, that has to be taught and therefore giving us that push. Uh, while clubs and societies are a, a really exhilarating experience for students at an informal level, I was part or I am part of uh, two committees, uh, first being the sports committee and the second which is the students logistics and mess committee. So as the name suggests, the sports committee is um, generally involved in uh, ensuring that all the students get enough sporting opportunities within and outside the institute. Whereas the uh, student logistics and mess committee um, is the answer to all your queries, your AC isn't cooling, your shower isn't working, uh, all of those problems, the food isn't tasting good. So we get such kind of issues which we communicate with the um, efficient team at our college and they ensure that these issues get sorted. So um, it, it's a great uh, body which works as a link between students and the uh, committee at college in order to ensure that uh, functioning is smooth overall. I am part of the Research and Writing Society where, uh, as the name suggests, we research on various topics, not necessarily limited to uh, law, it can be politics, political ideology, sociology, etc. And uh, we also uh, will be publishing soon and um, that's basically it. So we invite, it's, it's completely accessible to all the student body, we, ex we accept uh, writings from everybody and we are in fact encouraging. I am also part of two societies. One is the Legal Aid Clinic which is mandated by the Bar Council of India for every law school. So it's a matter of regulatory compliance that every law school has one. So I am a member of this Legal Aid Clinic and we have a vast mandate. So as law students, although we are not members of the Bar, we are not advocates, there are many things that we can do with our education and our expertise for, with the guidance of our professors despite being students. For example, uh, we can file RTI applications, consumer complaints. We in fact have a guest speaker scheduled to teach us about RTI applications. And one undertaking which I took part in was educating my fellow students about voter registration. So we ran a voter registration drive as part of the Legal Aid Clinic, teaching students how to fill out Form 6 because a lot of students for the first time will be voting in this year's elections. So spreading awareness uh, and uh, creating educational content is, is part of our clinic's mandate. So that's been an exhilarating experience. Also, I'm part of the AI Society on Governance and Ethics. Uh, in this society, we have a lot of guidance from our mentor, Professor, Professor Vishwas. We will be writing a report on deep fakes and the implication on of this on uh, the regulatory framework that currently exists and the development of AI as a technology and how this will have multiple implications. And we've already started a lecture series from uh, different eminent figures in the Indian IP industry. For example, we spoke to Professor Avantik Tamta, who was an expert in IP 
law and he educated us on AI and IP and soon we'll also be having a guest speaker from the law firm Anand Lanan. So it's an absolutely exhilarating experience, a great time and the amount of guidance and mentorship that we're getting from our professors one on one guiding on this is just excellent. So I, I can't recommend enough joining societies and clubs while you're in law school and interacting with your peers to create great uh, products such as a report and other things. Um, so I'm a part of two clubs as well. Uh, one is the Mental Health Society. Uh, here we focus on, uh, again, because we're students, we go through a lot of stress. It's mental health is something that Bitslaw takes extremely seriously. Um, although they fulfill all of our academic needs, our psychological needs are completely fulfilled by them. Uh, we have this application called Your Dose. Uh, through which we are connected to professionals who uh, cater to all of our needs and they're available to us 24-7. Very recently we had a screening of the movie Good Will Hunting and, uh, which was followed by a discussion again. I'm also part of the marketing and media team. Um, the marketing and media team focuses on social media uh, stuff that students uh, take interest in and this helps me interact with students, teachers, prof professionals and yeah, overall again, holistic learning it helps in that. You're all in second semester now, so in the break between the first and the second semester, I believe all of you had an experience interning somewhere or the other. So I would like to know more about internships. What was the process like? Was it easy? What were the internships like? Um, so I interned at RLEK Dehradun, which is an NGO. Uh, so the BITS law itself, the career counselling aid cell itself helped me acquire that internship in my hometown itself. So thank you for that. And um, talking about the internship, we set up a proposal for the government under the Uttarakhand uh, Mahila Samaikati Yojana. So we proposed setting up a, a kind of a platform which would essentially distribute package uh, the milk products that the tribals had in order to uplift them economically and therefore socially as well. And uh, recognizing my work, I also was awarded the best intern award at the RLEK, uh, the Parawan Mitra award, uh, which essentially governs that your uh, contribution towards environment was considerably and substantially enough uh, that it impacted the so social change that is to be brought. So that was my experience. Um, so I interned at a small law firm in Bangalore called Raj Gopal and Menon. I worked extremely closely with the partner and we would have high court visits every day. We would be at the district court and this so they, they essentially like enabled me to research for their cases, find them uh, precedents and uh, all of that and it was overall a really, really nice experience. I was completely in touch with the law and obviously what I learned in the first semester helped me through my internship. Um, similar to Pranjal, uh, I also got my internship through the BITS Law Internship Cell. So I worked at uh, Nivea. Working at a corporate in the first semester was a very different experience, something which I had not expected to do in the first sem itself. Um, the experience, however, was great. I learned how to draft CND notices, trademark infringement cases was something which I delved into. Um, seeing trademark infringement cases of Nivea with other companies, etc. And uh, basically aiding the company and its employees in their work, uh, specifically working in close relation with the members of the legal team was a great experience overall. Uh, those 30 days that I spent at the office um, truly taught me something which you can never learn within a closed space. It enables you to go out, interact with new people, try out new things, learn new skills and uh, basically sharpen whom you are as an individual overall. What about you Anushri, where did you intern? I interned at CRY, an NGO and uh, my work was mainly related to event management. So it was International Volunteers Day which fell in ja on Jan 6th which was the due date which was during my internship and uh, we, we basically conducted an event for all the volunteers who volunteered with CRY. It was it was very educational because I've never really been part of the behind the scenes. It's more so that you're part of, maybe you're dancing or you're anchoring, but in schools generally the teachers or somebody is sort of conducting you. You never conduct the event. So it was very nice. We did all the way from the decorations to the uh, how the, the sequence would flow. Everything was done by the interns and it was very nice. Uh, I interned at Public Concern for Governance Trust in uh, Mumbai which is an NGO that engages in social activism for honest, accountable and transparent governance. And it was a thrilling experience because I got to meet absolute legends and see how social activism actually 
works how uh, different members of the community stand up for civic engagement to inculcate values in the youth and ask for responsible governance so for example we visited uh, various police stations we saw an anti narcotic cell the anti narcotics bureau for police station we did school visits in underprivileged areas seeing how students actually learn and spoke to them about the issues that they face we had guest speaker sessions by former civil servants and police officers like mr dhanush kodi shivananda the encounter specialist who in the 90s removed the entire mafia and mumbai former commissioner of police mr julio ribeiro who was responsible for the anti khalistani insurgency in the 1980s so meeting these legends seeing how social activism done was a extremely incredible experience and furthermore this was secured by the placement cell of bits law and as a first year student i was really thrilled at being able to secure this internship so early on because students from other colleges were there in the second and third year so i was really grateful to the internship cell for securing this for me so early on was it easy for all of you to get an internship what was the preparation process like uh, But, the process as a whole was um, uh, very smoothly managed i would say by the internship cell uh, we basically had to communicate our interest uh, to ma'am uh, who was working at the cell and they would further reach out to the companies or the ngos or any other organizations we wish to apply to or uh, later for certain organizations students had uh, interviews or i would call them personal interactions uh, which would decide whether or whether you do or you don't get your opportunity but uh, overall the process was very well managed and uh, stress free that's good to know um i also want to know your experience with academic and industry visits we keep having people from the industry from the academia from uh, different arenas of law uh, what has that been like the guest lectures the interactions that you have with speakers maybe share some of those experiences i think um, the recent one was when we visited the bombay high court actually that was one of the most special one for me specifically because i have a keen interest in litigation so seeing the process up close seeing the practical application of law as it is seeing how uh, the law is actually applicable applicable in the court of law uh, when we read books we read laws as they are in the books and then see the practical application of it uh, there's a difference between the two and i think covering that difference is also an essential part of the law school and going there and seeing what we in legal theory call the realism actually uh, and seeing the the whole process up close i think is was special and then we have the guest lecture then we uh, especially senior advocate navroz sirvai was here at the campus whom we hosted uh, he talked about the development of constitutional law i think that was special given our interest uh, and then we have Uh, Justice B N Shri Krishna was an absolute legend in the field. Uh, his uh, committees he he led, his judgment he pronounced advocating human rights. Um, his committees then going on to make the D P D P Act, and then we uh, interviewed him. He we, he talked about how his experience was in the field, uh, advocating and then um, legislating and then uh, judging various matter, educating on matters and then heading various committees. I think. it was a whole new experience for me and uh, very close i would say to my heart as well you interviewed him personally yes i interviewed him personally and um, seeing these legends whom you have only read and who inspired you all your life i mean that's a special thing that you have and therefore doing that was something very special which i uh, which i did in the law school What about other visits? Any guest lectures in particular that you liked? One particularly memorable guest lecture for me was with Dr. Opinder Bakshi. He's one of the foremost legal scholars uh, in India, and he had uh, spoken to us about the Union Carbide League, the the Bhopal gas tragedy, mm -hmm. and it was extremely engaging lecture on the consequences of this on Indian law, particularly the development of tort law. In fact, I was so engaged by the lecture, I had few additional questions for uh, Dr. Bakshi. and i was so grateful to the professor for facilitating for the correspondence with him and in fact through this correspondence we got to have an extended two hour session with dr pindar bakshi and with myself and a few other students where we were able to talk about transnational corporations and how they can be treated as legal entities or individuals and the rights and responsibilities these corporations have so this was very cutting edge and innovative work that dr bakshi himself was responsible for bringing to india so having the opportunity to directly speak to him about his work Uh, one on one was a great experience and 
yeah, that was a particularly notable guest lecture for me. We also have some workshops happening simultaneously with the curriculum. So, uh, Anushri and Priya, I believe you both enrolled in these workshops. So, maybe tell us more about them. Right. So, uh, I actually want to, I participate in this uh, workshop which is called Learning Beyond Classroom. Now, there are courses offered. So, ours is more related to body movements, um, theatre, all of these forms of art really are used to understand more about yourself. So right now we are focusing more on identity, how uh, your body is really, you know the actions that you make, how is that forming a part of your identity, how is society shaping you uh, as a person and so right now we will be, we are in the process of making a self portrait. So I am actually narrating a poem with my team members who will be sort of doing a small theatrical performance and uh, we hope to be performing it pretty soon. That's terrific artistic. What um, about you Priya? So I enrolled in this workshop called Dada mm -hmm. uh, which was again hosted by What is Dada? Dada? Yeah, so uh, Professor Anand has this unique way of uh, naming his workshops. This is called Defense Against the Dark Arts. Okay. So this uh, workshop essentially, his idea was that uh, mastering Excel uh, is like mastering the dark arts. Mm -hmm. So Throughout the workshop, we went uh, through the nuances of Excel and he taught us a lot of tricks that I did not know existed. It made life so much easier. Uh, again, yeah, that really helped in our holistic learning. So, Excel is something that we all struggle with. Yeah. So, that's uh, wonderful. Um, I also want to know, and this is a question open to all of you, how accessible are faculty members at Bitch Law School? We have an open door policy, you can book appointments anytime you want. So, what has that experience been like so far? Uh, overall at the law school, uh, I feel all our professors are very approachable. Uh, in fact, the dean himself is very, very approachable. At any point of time, I have seen uh, students who have issues with regards to academics or hostel or be it anything. Uh, all our faculty members and the dean, as I mentioned, are always there for us. Um, being uh, part of this batch which is uh, so specially taken care of, by our uh, professors and the dean is, is, is really special to be part of. Uh, additionally, we have uh, meeting hours which we can book with our professors uh, and schedule uh, 20 to 30 minutes with them during any uh, part of the day which is compatible for them and the student himself, himself or herself in order to clear your doubts or in general talk about the problems that law school is posing to you and how you can encounter them. Uh, basically having uh, a figure to guide you through the problems that a student usually faces. My experience has been very similar with professors being extremely accessible and supportive beyond the classroom and beyond the syllabus and curriculum that we've been provided. They are stalwarts in their field in academia and their field of expertise and having their knowledge and support to rely on is excellent. For example, what particularly comes to mind is my experience with Professor Chinmay. I went to him with some of my research and writing work and I wanted to further pursue uh, research and publishing opportunities and he gave me extremely detailed guidance on which particular books to read, uh, how to get used to academic conventions, how, how to make sure I'm having academic integrity and not uh, plagiarizing by mistake. All of this was much beyond the scope of what we were doing in the classroom and, and cultivating these interests was an extremely excellent opportunity for my personal development. So in general I've seen professors do this. They can give you book recommendations regarding their subject if you are interested in further reading and engage with you on this so that you can develop yourself intellectually much beyond what's limited in the curriculum and syllabus. So that's been my experience with professors, they've been extremely accessible and very engaging. Um, just to add on, uh, Professor Mushtaq was extremely accessible as well. We started this thing called discussion hours with Professor Mushtaq where we discuss a lot of uh, uh, slightly controversial topics, but he's always there to moderate it and he has amazing insights to everything uh, that we talk about. We also have a mentor mentorship mentor. program. So what has that been like? I think I was just going to mention that. Uh, so the professors including yourself have, has taken up a bunch of kids and they are mentoring them. So we talk about all kinds of advice and take advices from you including life advices or be it subject related advices, which subjects we like, which subjects we don't. And you have been extremely kind to us and thank you for that. And um, yeah, I think that was a big experience for me as well because I would go 
really often lead to I think Professor Vishwas as well as Professor Chinmay, Professor Mush Mushtaq as you mentioned and all of them I think were really helpful in whether clearing doubts or whether giving life advices or whether in research papers. I think thanks to all of the faculties that we are able to inculcate this habit of like asking questions and developing that habit and critical thinking in fact. So that's my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've, uh, thank you for answering all the questions that we had curated from the FAQs that we get. I would request the viewers that you may now drop whatever questions that may have been un answered so far in the chat box and uh, be free to answer these questions. I, in fact, I have some of them here. Anshul from Bangalore asking, uh, and I quote, the competition to enter BITS law is very high. Can you please guide us about the most crucial things which amounted to your selection in the interview process? So I think the interview is make or break. I think if by the time you reach the interview, you have your uh, ranking for your entrance exam, you have your extracurriculars, you have your uh, board marks. So you, you have met the minimum threshold to uh, enter into law school, but the interview is where it's really make or break. So there's no way to really in prepare for the interview. You just have to let your personality shine through and be as authentic as possible. Show what your int like your interests, your curiosities, what what is what makes you unique for law, and keep updated what's what, what's happening in the legal industry, what's happening with politics, what's happening with current events. If you keep abreast of all of this and try to be as authentic as possible, you stand a great chance at the interview. Just remember, be proud of yourself. You've made your, you've made it this far already, and that be as authentic as possible. Be honest and let your curiosity and intellectualism shine through. I would say um, that be curious because I feel like asking questions even because it's, it's more of an interaction. It's not just a one-way street where the professor, whoever is interviewing you will just ask you questions. I feel like you should just, again, be authentic because I feel like it's also whether you are fit for the college. That just shows through your personality in the interview. Absolutely. Uh, another question and this is Debrat from New Delhi. How was your internship experience given you had no knowledge of law in the first year? How did it pan out? So I think in the internship process, especially when you are in this first semester, what you need is hard work. <laughs> what you need is consistency and that you need to show it to the internship, to the internship mentor. So what they see in you, they don't expect that you know some high amount of high degree of law, they expect hard work, they expect consistency and that is what really makes you feel apart. If you put in the regular effort at the, at the point, uh, they are ready to help you, they are ready to culminate your, you into something which you wish to be. Um, and that's what I think uh, was essential in the whole internship experience that uh, my interaction uh, and uh, my consistent, I mean, hard work again, made me feel apart from the all fifth year law students who were who had the knowledge. I mean, I mean, they had the knowledge more than me of the law that we were doing, that we were practicing, but they were not ready to give in those extra hours which I was, and that made me earn the award as well. Um, just adding on to Pranjal's point, I feel um, the BITS law students do have a cut above the rest in terms of um, the readiness that we have before we enter the workplace. Uh, for example, in semester 1 we had a course called Legal Methods, um, which basically had its score based on how you look for cases, how you make citations and all of that. So for me personally, as a part of uh, Nivea, looking for trademark infringement cases, looking for previous litigations that Nivea has had, all of these things might seem very daunting to a first semester student as the question says. However, for me, um, it was uh, much more smooth uh, since at college itself we had the experience of using different databases to look for cases and how we uh, figure out in a vast uh, variety of cases how you can filter out your searches and um, get the case you're looking for um, in a most time efficient manner. Just to add on, uh, we also had a session uh, by Professor Rahela and uh, the head of our career cell, Ms. Chetna. They, taught, they essentially helped us refine our resumes, which also kind of put us, again, a cut above the rest. Uh, also, I think asking questions, asking a lot of questions, even though you may think that they're not relevant, that clarifies a lot of your doubts and also tells your mentor where you uh, are placed. So yeah, that again helps with our entire internship process. 
Great, thank you. Dimple from Jammu has a question. She is asking, have heard that library is very important for law schools. How is Bits Law Library and how much time do you spend in the library per day? I think my time goes into library and nothing else. After the classes, we sit in the library studying and studying not only the course books but also various kinds of books, especially inspiring from other judges, other lawyers, for example, Before the Memory Fades by Fali S. Nariman or even Nani Palkiwala and just the All these uh, lawyers, all these advocates have inspired us. I think reading all those and then sitting in the library working on the assignments uh, is a core and a sinusure uh, of the whole law school process and it forms a very integral part of the same. Arimon, we have an extremely competent library team, like the faculty, the staff that we have that are extremely competent. We get daily updates of the books that have been added or the articles that we should read. And not only that, not only hard, like physical copy, hard copies, we have an entire plethora of it online. So even if you're not able to access it in college, just one click on the laptop and we have everything available. Additionally, we also have a lot of research sources provided by the library which helps us a lot during moods and any other research, basically assignments and that really contributes to life at a law school. Mirza Ali from Rakhno asks, is the campus inclusive for every student from every religion, every race and sexual and orientation etc. like top law schools of this country? 100%, I would say 100%. Um, our uh, cohort of uh, 120 students, it's a, a great variety of people from all parts of India um, and over the past 8 to 9 months the way we've seen people bond with each other, friendships come close, at the same time few friendships fall out but again the, the skill to solve issues and accept people the way they are and still appreciate the diversity of the batch, I feel um, uh, it's, it's a perfect mix of people from all parts of India making sure that um, we have uh, the skill, or I, I wouldn't say skill, but the value of uh, tolerance and uh, that's, that's really important in my opinion in order to be um, uh, really close and at the same time um, have a good time with your batchmates over the course of five years. I absolutely agree. Inclusion is totally one of our strengths and the diversity that we have at Bits Law it enriches the experience for everyone. For example, my friends from the Hindi belt make fun of my Mumbai Hindi and like let me sharpen up my skills there. My friends from South India share their festivals and traditions like Onam with us and enrich the life of all the students. So the student life gets much more exciting when you have people from all over the country with their perspectives. Political issues become more engaging because people from different regions of the country have different points of view. So inclusion absolutely is something that uh, is a strength of ours and we have people from all the country from all different kinds of backgrounds and we come together because of our shared passion and love for the law and nothing else. I mean we are law students and preamble is in our blood and <laughs> <laughs> these inclusive values, fundamental rights are in our blood. So yeah, there's absolute inclusivity and there's nothing like exclusion and we feel like as a family here at Bits Law. Uh, just to add on to something Salil said, we also have a cultural committee. They take care of all the festivals and ensure that every single festival uh, and every single event is celebrated. So again, that adds on to the entire idea of inclusivity. It's very interesting you mentioned uh, Hindi because Achal Leshware from um, the southern part of the country is asking that he hasn't learnt Hindi. So would he face a language problem? Absolutely not. So I think Bits Law emphasizes uh, English as both a language of instruction and uh, of communication informally as well. You can speak Hindi if you want to but it's primarily in English and this is because uh, law is a very English dominated field. Law, law transcends uh, state boundaries and it's across the country. So English is the common language which everyone needs to communicate in. And in fact, our law and literature course, our English course is highly emphasized and highly engaging. We study texts from all uh, canons of world literature uh, from Europe to India and English is absolutely essential. So there's no worry if you don't know how to speak Hindi, uh, English is all you need. We have a lot of uh, people who do not know Hindi and it's, it just works all right for them. Like even outside when they need to travel, they just, I feel like also in interacting with a lot of people who are yeah. like, you know, you just inculcate certain small terms that you just need for Mumbai maybe, but that's about it. You really don't need. 
Okay, um, Michelle Anthony is asking, Hi, I was wondering if you have to learn how to do citations on your own or were there any facilities to teach you that? So as Ariman mentioned for the internships, we had a legal methods course right in our first semester and that course is extremely extensive. So while you feel it's dry in the moment, you get taught Oscola citations, MLA, Chicago, everything, all the citation styles and it puts you at a huge advantage compared to the uh, rest of your competitors and other law schools because when you're heading into your first internship, you already know how to distinguish between the ratio descendenta of a judgment, the opticta, find the correct citation and it's a huge advantage. We also have digital tools which help you do that. We get reference guides like an Oxford reference guide. We can go to databases. So all of this is taught to us and it's included in the curriculum right in the first semester. So it's absolutely essential and worthwhile. Adding on, uh, Professor Vishwas keeps emphasizing on, uh, you know, like why the importance of citations. He taught it to us and at that point I don't think any of us were interested in it, we were just like move on with the legal methods course. But uh, it came for one of our MCQ tests where we had to write a citation and then I think again the internship really opened our eyes that oh my god citation is something that we really really require. So yeah, citations is absolutely covered by law school. Okay. Um, Hi, I'm Michelle from Kerala. This isn't an academic question, but as someone who has never been to Mumbai, I wanted to know if it was hard to adjust to the environment. I mean, again, I've, this is also my first time when I was here for the first time in August in Mumbai. So, you tend to adjust. I mean, with time, you adjust to the surroundings, you adjust to the law school. Um, you come here, you make new friends, you adjust your schedule around the law school, around the busy schedule, you get busy around the assignments, around the lectures, you tend to do your work and then the, the life just goes around and with time you see you are uh, you're telling directions to other people that uh, this place is right next to, uh, for example, the Pui Plaza. So it's just a matter of time and you, give, you get accustomed to everything. Adding on, I am from Bangalore and that city will always have my heart but uh, Mumbai is an extremely welcoming city. You will find people uh, people from all over the country here and adjusting to it is just a matter of time. Okay, thank you. Harpreet Singh asks how many internships you do in the whole course? Are grades in law school important for internships? So what uh, BCI, BCI mandates that you do a minimum of 7 internships or a total of 20 weeks. So you have, you can do up to nine internships though, and uh, there is a requirement that you will do one NGO internship. So it's recommended that you finish it in your first year. But the internship cell is very supportive of the kinds of organizations you want to work in. They can cater to your particular interests, and they have a vast variety of potential internships that you can do, whether it's corporate or an NGO, law firms, advocates. And already in the first year, students have gone to all different kinds of internships, from advocates to high courts to law firms, corporates, NGOs. So yes, that's the. Uh, grades, they're not everything, but they do matter. So as long as you time your, like, because we get our calendar before beforehand. So then as long as you just schedule your time accordingly, then I think if you can balance it out well, then you will be able to score your grades. Thank you. There's another question. Will there be bullying or ragging inside the campus? As seniors, what can we expect from our seniors this year? So, um, again, WITS law follows an uh, anti-lagging policy. They're very, very strict about it. And to be very honest, at least from my side, the only thing you're going to get is help if you need it because, again, that's something we missed out on. Although we had our TRFs who were extremely helpful, I think as seniors, the only thing we're looking at is helping you out through law school. Yeah, We've uh, signed an undertaking right in the beginning <laughs> yeah. that we will not be ragging anybody. And like she said, we will be helping. We're very excited actually to get more people. Okay, uh, let's hope that's true. Jill Shah from Ahmedabad uh, asks, how strict is BITS law? Are the faculties orthodox in their approach or <laughs> open in thought process? Um, I wouldn't call BITS law orthodox in any sense. Uh, all of our uh, faculty are open to different kinds of perspectives. There's no certain um, uh, there's, there's no certain thing that we need to follow in everything. For example, if you think in this way, you're appreciated. If you think in another, you're not. Um, the people as a whole are very accepting and uh, I wouldn't call it orthodox as I said. Um, and going to the diversity that I previously mentioned, um, in such a diverse cohort, it's, it's really difficult for one to be orthodox and survive throughout. So being orthodox would, be, would mean you not adjusting 
with the curriculum and with the people. So um, all I would suggest is be welcoming, try to learn from different people, different perspectives and grow as an individual. So one of the foundation principles of its law is critical thinking, which essentially is everything against an orthodox way of uh, teaching. So while we inculcate the practice of critical thinking, we, uh, we praise, we appraise uh, criticizing everyone. <laughs> so be it the senior, senior most lawyers, the senior most judges, even the teachers in the faculties, their views, you are allowed to criticize them, you are allowed to discuss your views with them. So I think it's a open environment, a safe environment and you can discuss all that you want in that environment. Uh, also a lot of our courses follow the Socratic approach. So that's something that has no room for any orthodox ideas. I mean you're learning and you're teaching at the same time and that's again, you, there's absolutely no room for any orthodox thought. While we speak about orthodox uh, methods of teaching, um, orthodox mentality also uh, isn't something which would fit into Bits Law because one of our core principles is empathy. Uh, we preach empathy at every given opportunity and we make it a point to practice it at every given point of time. Ankita from Kolkata asks, how is the food at the mess? Is there a dress code? How are the peers? Yeah, so answering the first question, uh, how is the mess? It's good, the, it's taken care by Sudesco while here uh, at the permanent campus we have Taj Sats which is even better. So um, you will be taken care of. And the second question is about the dress code. No, we don't. It's just about dress being dressed appropriately. And we are allowed to dress either even in traditionals, even in kurtas if you want to, even in saris, uh, even in pant jeans, shirts, t-shirts. Just be an appropriate formal, an appropriate dress. That's it. Uh, just to kind of add on, uh, although like the food that we have is excellent, nothing beats ghar ka khana. So don't expect that when you come to uh, any like any hostel, anything. But yeah, I mean, uh, like Pranjal mentioned, it's all taken care of, and uh, we have a lot of like diverse cuisines that we get. It's not only like we stick to one type of cuisine. So different day, different food. So yeah. Thank you. Rachit from Bulan Shahar is asking, since it's the first year of Bits Law, don't you guys miss seniors? How are you adjusting the environment uh, without a senior batch? So our TRFs and our professors are like our, se our seniors for us, like the, research, the teaching and research fellows that we have for each of the subjects and our professors, they are so accessible and open to us that we can come to them with any questions, any doubts and they are there to support us, mentor us, give us guidance whether it's life advice, academics, anything else. So we don't really feel that lack. Uh, the, as Arimhan had mentioned before, from whether it's the dean, the uh, professors, the TRF, all of them are open to us. So I think we don't feel that lack of seniors at all. Uh, Salim, that you mentioned TRFs, maybe you can tell our viewers what is a TRF so it's and a teaching, how do they help you read? Right, they're, they're teaching and research fellows that they're, they're completing their PhDs and they and they help us by uh, gu guiding us outside of the classroom for uh, for each of our subjects. They run, for example, things called tutorial sessions where we would go deeper into uh, the, a particular text. For example, in English, if you're studying a particular text, we'll have a deep dive into that. Of uh, social sciences, we, we need to look into primary sources that, uh, that back up the secondary sources that we're reading in class. Uh, whether it's assessments, we can go to them for doubts regarding that. They help pre prepare, for example, there was a mood code competition. They help prepare the problems that we uh, face over there. So they, are, they, are, they support the professors in teaching us and they guide us with our academic difficulties. Having said that, um, as a batch of 120, it, it feels like a very close batch. So uh, I think all of us are looking forward to having more people uh, coming. We are looking forward to the juniors coming. Uh, we'll have more friends, more groups, more people to interact with. So yeah, that is something which really excites us. Thank you, Salil and Araman. Shai Kafrin is asking that being away from home, we need that guidance and support which we received being at hometown. Does the law school provide any kind of mental support in this regard? And how is the relationship between a professor and a student? Um, so like I mentioned, uh, there's an application called Your Dost. We have professionals who are extremely, extremely competent that are available 24-7 over text, over call and you can book a session with them uh, in real life so the mental health aspect is taken care of completely. Uh, talking about guidance, I think Pranjal mentioned the mentor-mentee sessions that we have. Uh, my mentor is Professor Nunmai, 
she is extremely accessible i can go to go and speak to her about anything any problems that i'm facing uh, it might be something in the hostel it might be the food it might be me not being able to adjust at all she is extremely accessible and i'm pretty sure i'm very sure that all of the professors are accessible in that way okay um i understand that the hostel accommodation was off campus for the first batch could you share your experiences on an off campus accommodation where is it provided is trans transport provided to and fro campus could you also share some details about the new campus in kalyan okay um, so talking about the temporary one so we are located at the hirandani uh, knowledge camp park where is uh, the camp where the campus is located while the uh, hostel facilities are located nearby uh, in the regent hill part of hirandani so it's an excellent complex uh, the with some uh, students who also reside, resided there and which are, which when shifted here we took their place and but it cannot be compared with the facilities here at kalyan we have the huge 65 acre campus we were to bit some bit slow and aftermath the bits design uh, we have the whole thing to ourselves we have uh, a faculty a, a gym uh, a yoga room a common room and what not every sport like every major sport is being taken care of and i think this is a state of art facility and i'll love to be here and so i think will you uh just to add on this is actually our first time at the kalyan yeah. campus and i think as soon as we entered the gates we were all awestruck all of our phones were out like oh my god this is where we're going to be uh and uh talking about the transport from regent hill to hiranandani where our campus is located there's a bus every uh 20 minutes so it will pick you up and drop you and then uh, the same bus will return so the transport is completely taken care of thank you in fact we are right now at the new campus and you can see the splendid view in the back where uh, we're sitting in a room and the entire campus is visible from here um moving on harpreet singh is asking tell tell me something about the hostel and their rules uh so our <laughs> hostel we do have a curfew it is about 10:30 so apart from that we don't i mean it's it's a nice it's lovely the accommodation is really nice our roommates we bond really well i mean at this point i don't think i could live without them and uh yeah and basically it's more about how you coordinate with your roommates apart from that it doesn't really infringe on your lives but yes there are certain rules you can't there are quiet hours to be enforced etc but it's you can live through it it's very nice and um roommates basically you build bonds Al although there is a early curfew of 10:30 we do have access to common rooms which which are extended to 11:30 and during exam seasons or other times when there are many assessments you can use it up to uh, 12:30 so there's a ex extended hours basically where you can collaborate with your uh, peers if you're working on certain assignments or studying or things of that nature and our common rooms are very well equipped they have like foosball tables carrom boards table tennis tables so you can uh, use that play with your friends and yeah the common rooms are quite excellent so. um, and in any uh, extraordinary case when a certain student would want to arrive at the hostel after 10:30 pm Uh, with a valid reason, of course. Uh, we have an app which uh, uh, which we use to put the reason why we will be coming late to the hostel, and it requires parental permission and warden approval as well. Once both those approvals are done, the student he or she can arrive at the hostel uh, at a later hour. However, this is not encouraged very frequently, so uh, the timings are strictly 5:30 a.m. and 10:30 p.m. Uh, for entry and exit, respectively. we have another interview related question uh, my current affairs are really poor do you think it would be a major obstacle in the interview process i mean you need to know about the current scenarios in the legal system so um, again the same sex case uh, the 370 case the demonetization case the amu minority case you if you know all this stuff see if you are coming to a law school and you have a interest in law you you'll be attracted to all of this stuff and uh, i was reading all of the stuff since like uh, my 10th or 11th grade so if you read all of this stuff you are developing your habit of reading the cases and judgments which you will be doing in the law school itself so it's about culmination of that habit uh, which the interview interview is kind of testing you uh, so uh, essentially it's uh, that accumulation of your legal process of your legal case uh, or your current affairs 
I mean your current affairs must be linked to the legal part. Uh, that would help you a lot in the interview. I would say that. Yeah. Additionally, I would say since I was a student from the science background, so I mean I was preparing for NEET. So most of the time I did not really read the newspaper and so getting back into it was difficult. So I would say at least start cultivating it now, pick maybe a couple of topics of relevance because I feel like you can pick which topic of current affairs you would like to talk about. There may be if, if it's allowed. So I feel like just start now. Uh, also, also uh, current affairs is extremely important. Like Sal mentioned, just being authentic and uh, kind of you know letting yourself shine. That's what uh, matters the most, I think, during the interview process. Also, even if you're not very well abreast of current affairs, you must be doing something with your time, right? You have certain interests, certain hobbies, certain interests. You can pivot to that. There, there is there's something about you which is unique. There's something that you can't stop talking about if if you're talking to your friends about it, to your family about it. Pivot to that, let, let, let that shine through, your interviewer will be very flexible. Of course, it's an interaction, it's an interactive session, it's not meant to be an interrogation. So even if you don't feel too strong on one particular area, you do have the flexibility to move to other areas and show that intellectualism shine through. It might not be strong in one area, but there, there must be something that you're really interested about. Make sure that you're strong on that and let, and let that come through. I would recommend. Yeah, I mean, we have many friends at the law school itself who are not that uh, legally aware, but they have excellent knowledge in finance, uh, excellent knowledge in financial law. So that is also an amazing area that you are well versed with. So uh, again, what he said, uh, you might be aware of a part of current affairs or a part of knowledge and not be with others and that's totally fine, I think. Tanishka Neenavati asks, is attendance a problem? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's I think a problem which uh, or a topic which every student in any college deals with. Uh, however, according to the uh, Bar Council of India mandate, uh, we have a policy of a minimum 70% attendance. Uh, and this attendance is, uh, um, the 70% attendance needs to be maintained across all courses. For example, let's say you have five courses, in four you are meeting the requirement with let's say 85%, but in one of the courses you are lagging with let's say 65%. You won't be allowed to take the end term examination due to that lack of attendance. So um, I think the lecture hours, uh, we have 30 hours of lectures per week um, and it, it's quite um, manageable uh, in terms of maintaining a minimum of 70% with enough amount of, uh, let's say you would want to take a break or get extra sleep one of the days or work on a certain assignment one of the days. Uh, the law school provides flexibility in those terms but um, the rule of a minimum of 70% uh, stands strictly throughout each and every semester. I think 70% is very attainable. It's yeah. not that difficult. Uh, so as long as you maintain 70%, it's fine. It's good enough. And just to make it clear, this is a law school rule, not a BITS rule. This is across law schools in the country. Any law school you go to is ha will have a 70% like mandatory attendance. So I don't think it's too demanding to ask for that. How is the examination process in BITS law? Is it road based learning or practically teaching? So a lot of our subjects they use the application based questions and uh, like for example this semester for our midterms we did not have an English exam we had uh, a paper to write so and for the legal theory our exam was open book so I mean the professors are very flexible that way and the curriculum is again designed in such a way that the flexibilities can be included so yeah I mean it's again flexible. Yeah, I mean, uh, while teaching as well, for example, legal theory, we tend to study cases in, instead of root learning again, uh, memorizing things. Instead of that, we are learning cases. We are learning A.K. Gopal and how natural law is apl applicable in A.K. Gopal and how positive law is applicable in A.K. Gopal and how realism is applicable for Justice Bhagwati or Justice Krishna here. And through that practical application, we are learning jurisprudence. I think that falls uh, something unique to from other law schools, including, for example, legal history as well, uh, or history as for that matter. We are going to, uh, for example, the Godrej archives or even to Kanheri caves, and that I think provides again a holistic idea of uh, learning and rather than a, a, a um, an orthodox again way of teaching. Also, to add on, to give a specific example in uh, contracts, although the Bear Act is literally our Bible for that. 
uh, the way we are taught is through cases. We are taught about the law and then how it applies. So the, again, there's no rote learning in that. It's just understanding the law and the application of it. Our exams are also structured in that format. For example, our contracts had uh, hypothetical problems. For example, if you take the BBA subjects, uh, marketing, we had a case study and we have to provide a lot of examples on how this concept would apply in real life. Um, just to cap off what my peers have mentioned, uh, people usually have this notion that law school is all about rote learning, learning what's written in so and so section, act, and you write it down in the paper. Uh, I would suggest before joining Bix Law, you keep that notion out of law school and come here uh, to ensure that you understand the concept to apply it, just to make sure that the question isn't longer than your answer that you're writing. So. How is the socio-economic environment inside the campus? So again, it's a very, very diverse batch of people. We have people from, I think, 23 states yeah. in Wits Law and everyone from very varying social and economic backgrounds. And something that I think we've already mentioned before is like the idea of tolerance and uh, the idea of like forming bonds with people and like lesser judgment. So it's a very socio-economic diverse environment that we have. Dipali from Pune asks, scholarship at BITS Law is good as it takes your merit base more. Please give me some ideas about how to impress faculties in the interview to make sure we get those scholarships. I would say just be yourself and um, whatever you know, like Salil mentioned, whatever you know, be thorough with it because that's where you shine. You can't just pick a topic that you're not confident on and talk for a while about it. So be thorough, be accurate and just be relaxed because it's, you will get through. It's completely fine and um, again, it's, I feel it's more of the interview which, which allows your selection. So just be aware of your concepts, just be confident you will make it through. Ajinkya asks, how often do you guys go back home? Is it permitted or special permission is required? So I think the students from Mumbai, you're allowed to go home on the weekends. So some students, we stay perhaps for a Saturday, go back on Sunday, or we go on a Friday evening, go for a Saturday, come back maybe Sunday, Sunday evening. So you can spend some time with your friends after, after the weekdays are over with them, but you can still visit back home. And for the students outside of Mumbai, we have enough breaks throughout the semester mm -hmm. where, you can, where you can go back home. We have long study leaves before exams. So if you'd like to go back, visit at that time, study at home and then come back, you can do that as well. And then we have long breaks for, in, for the internships. One, one thing about the internships is that the internship cell, the placement cell is very accommodating. So they can secure internships for you in, in your hometown. So that allows you to spend time with family, be at home while also completing your internship uh, requirements. So I think it's quite flexible. You can visit home a lot no matter where you're from. If you're in Bombay, obviously you'll be visiting home more. But even if you're not from Bombay, you'll still be able to visit visit home quite a lot. Um, like Salil mentioned before, we are already get our academic calendar and the holidays that we get. So because me and Pranjal are both not from Mumbai, I think that plays a very important role. We see the academic calendar, see the holidays and then uh, plan our visits visit to home accordingly. Another logistical question, do you require parents permission every single time you leave the campus? This is from Ria Vedya. Any so, time that you go beyond the curfew time, you do need permission. But during the curfew time, if you want to go, that is basically 5.30 a.m. to 10.30 uh, p.m., you don't really need parental permission. But you will have to write an out and an in or and the digital infrastructure is very well set up. So we have an app called Call Paul. It's very easy to raise a request. It sends a message or a phone call to your parent. They can approve that and then it goes to the warden. So it's a, it's a very well set up digital infrastructure and it's not too uh, time consuming or inconvenient. Is it possible to pursue interests or hobbies while being in law school? Yes. Absolutely. You can. I read, I keep, I love reading. So I keep uh, issuing books from the library, which is not related to my coursework. And I'm able to do that. And uh, you can. I actually work out as well. So that's something that I do every single day. So you can. You just have to balance your time properly. Just don't leave everything to the last minute. 
In fact, we have a cultural event tomorrow where there'll be a fashion show, there'll be dancing, there'll be music performances. I personally play the guitar. I love I love playing the guitar. So I'll be playing with a few bandmates, like almost seven songs. I've been practicing that for the past week, week and a half. So you definitely can balance extracurriculars and your own interests and hobbies. You just need to, as Anushri mentioned, not procrastinate. You have to manage your time well. If you look at your academic calendar, you have all of your assignments set out for you. So if you know there's going to be a particularly hectic time of the semester, perhaps at that time you need to cut back on your activities more. But but you definitely can. You can pursue um, other areas. Adding requests. on, because we're in a temporary camp, uh, temporary campus right now, we don't have a lot of sports sports, sports facilities attached to the campus. But uh, Bitslaw has kind of gotten us a Saturday slot, where in the mornings we have a basketball court, a football ground, and a cricket ground available uh, to us. And we get, I think, to us to uh, play all the sports that we want to. So, I mean, balancing hobbies, Bitslaw is already doing it for you. Uh, question there, uh, Pranjal, there's a question for you. Um, saw your post on Instagram about your internship. Can you please mention how did you manage to do what you did? Uh, okay, so the RLEK, which apparently filed the first environmental case in India, is a huge platform, is a huge NGO. So there we had all the interns interning, approximately, I think. 30 approximately 30 of them interning at one time so uh, ranging from first year like myself to fifth year and again because of the hard work and consistency you put in so we drafted i personally drafted a proposal setting up a platform to make deras what i call uh, so it was for packaging and distribution of milk products that the tribals made so that they can be uplifted economically and therefore socially and through that, we were able to approach the government uh, under the Yojana, under the Uttarakhand Mahila Samikit Yojana. And we were, uh, we were able to ask the government for funds uh, to subsidize uh, that, uh, that initiative and to help the tribals. So essentially, the NGO is acting as a buffer zone before, between the government and the people, helping the people avail the benefits from the government. So what I did was um, make them avail that through making a proposal and then we also visited several schools which were up in the Himalayas um, seeing how the relic uh, works how at the ground level and especially NGO is mandated by the BCI I think it inculcates again the value of empathy because if you know how uh, the tribals feel what they go through on an everyday basis only then you'll be able to advocate for them in a court of law and I think that is an, a, a very essential feature of um, advocacy that you know how they feel so that if you're standing before a judge you are able to argue that um, your lordship this is the matter and this is what they go through and personally, I feel uh, the NGO internship is an essential and therefore making that extra initiative to go uh, to the marginalized community to uplift them was uh, a very essential one and therefore I got the award as well. Thank you, Pranjil. Is it hard to maintain a scholarship that you have received? Uh, so you do have to work hard, but I don't think it's difficult per se because as long as you study regularly you put your assignments with your utmost performance i think it's it's relatively okay to maintain are there any sports festivals and cultural festivals that are conducted at Pitslaw? so um having said that we are currently at a temporary campus back in Hawaii. Uh, we didn't have uh, daily access to sports uh, facilities However, being part of the sports committee, we've um, curated uh, a new uh, event which is called Raftar. It's going to be uh, consistent throughout the Bitslaw journey. So, uh, it's a sports event uh, where we have uh, track and field events, uh, a cricket or a football turf um, along with uh, uh, badminton as well. So, that's going to be happening in May and uh, currently it will be at a sports association outside. But uh, once we are back in this uh, splendid campus, we have all the facilities over here, so it would be um, great where students can practice and sharpen their skills on a day-to-day -day basis and we can conduct sports and cultural events for um, the entire batch in this campus itself. 
Uh, to talk about the cultural uh, events, we are having a cultural night tomorrow where I think all, most of our students are participating in various things like dance, music, skit and a fashion show. Um, so I mean because we are the foundation batch, we are trying to set traditions and uh, yeah, so there is like Aryan mentioned sports and cultural events. Can each student please mention about their extracurriculars here because Bits Law is the only law school which considers extracurriculars as a selection parameter. Yes, uh, so I am a national shooter and uh, I have state medals as well. So uh, I think extracurricular is very essential for anyone and everyone. So being at a law school shouldn't hinder your extracurriculars but it should uh, promote it. So you can divert your energy there as well. You can rejuvenate yourself through that process. And I think RMN is doing a mind-blowing job of organizing Raftar here. And um, yeah, so again, the hobby part is an essential component here. And extracurricular just help in your overall development. And not as a law student, but also as a person itself, as your personality increases and grows substantially when you are involved in some ho a particular hobby which interests you. So I mean, it's an essential component. Um, so I've played sports all my life. I've played tennis for the longest time. I'm a swimmer. I've participated in the junior NBA. Other than that, I think my other hobbies, I love reading. It's something that I don't think I would ever let go of. And yeah, like Fandral said, just because we're in a law school with a very rigorous curriculum doesn't mean we let our hobbies go. Uh, apart from the sports part of it, I feel um, our CV should be well-rounded in terms of um, having attended and won MUN competitions, debate competitions um, and all of that. So I personally have um, uh, played the role of an assistant director at the Harvard International MUN which happened in 2021. So uh, again, it's basically uh, accumulating different kinds of uh, certificates, experiences which adds to your personality as a whole. Um, making you um, that 3D individual which Bits Law looks for. I've uh, practiced dance Bharatanatyam for uh, over 12 years. I've also dabbled myself in uh, mixed martial arts and other martial arts. And I've uh, played a couple of sports, tennis for one. And also again competitions etc. like writing, speech competitions. I think your extracurricular should be a reflection of your personality and the skills that you have that you'll bring with you to law school. For example, I won first place in, a, in the annual essay competition of the London School of Economics. I wrote an essay called The Idea of Public Re uh, Reason Revisited in the 21st Century and I won 100 pounds for that. I debated in an international debating tournament in Amman, Jordan. Uh, I founded a publication like a blog where I wrote on current events. So all of these activities, they show my interest in communication and public speaking and thinking about certain issues. And all of that helped me get into Bits Law because they saw uh, like the holistic idea of my, of my personality, the skills that I would bring and the skills that I want to refine and hone in trying to be an effective lawyer. So I think that's why the extracurriculars are very important and they show that you are well-rounded beyond just your ability to give exams. You have real-world skills which can be useful to you in your professional journey. Okay, um, that's all the questions that we have for today. We've addressed many questions that came from the viewers. I thank you all for expressing curiosity and asking our students. And I'm grateful to all five of you for coming here, for volunteering to take up these questions and to share your experiences. I learned a lot about all five of you and it was wonderful. Uh, if there are any questions that remain unanswered or you have not been able to ask today, please direct them to our admissions team. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening.